from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering RSA Conference 2020 San Francisco. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Well, welcome back to RSA for CUBE coverage here at RSA Conference in Moscone. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Our next guest is Shekhar Sarukai, who's with the McAfee, and he's a technical fellow, formerly chief scientist and co-founder of Sky High Networks, which was acquired by McAfee, really pioneering some of the, what we're seeing as cloud as the driver of the security paradigm. Shekhar, thanks for coming on theCUBE. John, thank you so much for having me I know we don't have here. a lot of time, so I'll just jump right in. Yep. Cloud is changing the game. You guys saw this wave early at Sky High. Yep. So how has it rendered itself today? We're seeing the signals out there. Palo Alto Network's earnings were down this week because of their on-premise business is shifting to the cloud. We think they'll do well, but it's obviously impacting. Yep. Everyone's got a shift, including their customers. What's going on? Yeah, and this is amazing. You know, last year, I think about a few months back, we did a survey of large enterprises. But for the first time, we found that the majority of the CIOs and CISOs felt that cloud was more secure than on-prem. That's a big deal. I mean, I've never seen that before. I didn't expect it to be this quick. But that, that actually manifests itself in ent enterprises ready to be cloud first, are very cloud friendly. And that's significantly different from when we started Sky High and even a couple of years ago. And because of that, how you secure the data, how you secure who connects to it, the kind of threats need to be looked at the different lens. And I mean, we've seen uh, breaches happen every week, you know, if you look, look back over the last year. And a lot of those are cloud native threats. These are not malware based breaches of data, which is what you would think of when you, you know, traditionally look at- uh, Microservices breaches? No, these are cloud breaches because cloud has, it's very, it's good, right? It's got transparency, yeah. it's got APIs, so whatever APIs you use, a bad actor could use it as well. The way they land, exfiltrate, and expand in the uh, cloud footprint is very different from how uh, you know, traditional malware app attacks uh, happen within your enterprise network. And so we've been looking at cloud native threats um, and what it means to even secure data in the cloud, which is very different from you know, securing data in your enterprise. For example, um, I may run a DLP on my uh, laptop you know, to check what kind of sensitive data is out there. But in the cloud, you don't do that, right? Yeah. Because the data is cloud native. And we've, in our analysis, we've seen that 50% of traffic is cloud to cloud. So it bypasses your traditional enterprise network, it bypasses your devices, and so when you're talking of data protection, you need to look at new ways of understanding cloud and integrating into it. Yeah, it's interesting. I've talked to many CISOs who have been cloud native and mm -hmm. born in the cloud, and they say their, their, their worst day in the cloud for security is better than any day they've had on premise. <laughs> in other words, security, it's, it, there's actually more security in the cloud. But then when they start getting into hybrid, mm -hmm. and now what we see is multi-clouds, that third wave coming, right. you start to look at on-premise to cloud, cloud to cloud, you have a network component, becomes a big part of yeah. it. Could you share your vision on how the network needs to evolve? Because Amazon and Azure, they got their own sure. networks. Sure, But sure. it's also not on-premise either, so That's right. if I want to run a, GB, um, a route from here to here, there's yeah, impact, no, what's the network impact? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think uh, network-based security controls are going away. And if you look at what uh, McAfee announced just today, is the, what we call the unified cloud edge. We acknowledge that security is it's security in depth at the endpoint, at the cloud, and in the network. So we are the first product really to have integrated policies and visibility into data flow between the clouds, to and from the cloud, and in the device. And so in that model, you have a network component, so we use our uh, secure web gateway, which is cloud hosted, so it's interestingly, you'll see that a lot of security tools are also becoming cloud native, and so that's what we've uh, leveraged. Our cloud native cloud security platform, our cloud native SWG, the web gateway, as well as our EDR and endpoint protection from the cloud. Let me ask you a question, as a chief scientist, yep. guru that you are, the security posture of companies certainly has changed with the cloud. How would you describe the current posture from a customer with respect to the cloud yeah. in a good way? What, would, what do they need to be thinking about? Yeah, I think, you know, actually Gartner said it very well. In fact, a couple of years, uh, last year they had a, a MQ, in which they actually said that 99% of your data breaches in the cloud is going to be because of customer fault. And it may be the most 
trivial things, but those are the ones which get you, right? And it turns out that while cloud is easy and quick to adopt, it's very easy to misconfigure stuff. So human well. error. Yeah, completely. And I kid you not, majority of the issues are failure to understand your shared responsibility model. It's hard to call something that. a breach when the door is wide open. They're just walking through. That's, that's, right. that's not really a breach, that's to call just the door's open, <laughs> <laughs> they walk through. I mean, that's what you're talking about here. Yeah, exactly. I, I, and it's the responsibility of the customers to configure it appropriately. And I think that'll take care of the lowest hanging fruit for them. And then as they evolve their workloads moving into the cloud, they need to think about hybrid and not get into the trap of creating silos. So as a classic example, right? Security vendors, we're great at building a ton of products and companies around it. There's container security, there's VM security, there's cloud security. But at the end of the day, a customer is moving their workload, an application into cloud. Yeah. They need a consistent way to ensure that the configurations are right, the data is secure, and there's no threats to it. And we need to make that model of simplicity, of consistency across all of these kinds of so things. So it's, right? it's, it's clear that McAfee's transforming their business yeah. to cloud. Uh, you guys have been a big part of that, congratulations. Thank you. How would you describe McAfee's current situation with respect to the uh, cloud growth, now the on-premise cloud hybrid integration, and multi-cloud coming, because you now have this entire systems architecture, right. AKA cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid, public. Right. All need to work together. You know, I think uh, McAfee's very well positioned in this. I mean, honestly, when we joined McAfee, McAfee's strength was in the endpoint, and actually they had a very good business in the server endpoint as well, with the CWS product. When we came in with a cloud native approach where, and, and uh, that product was selling very well for the private data center on-prem. What we were able to do is add a cloud um, security story, but also create, sort of be the catalyst for Envision. Envision is really this broad umbrella within uh, McAfee for doing not only cloud security, but EDR, insights, you know, products which can run in the cloud at scale in a multi-tenant yeah. manner. You know, to and if you can create a data-driven approach to make that human personalization work Exactly. So they don't forget to secure that S3 bucket. Exactly. <laughs> Which is the bigger problem, Which is the right? biggest problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like when you get out of your car, it's like you left your keys in. Exactly. I mean, there's a, there's a new level of personalization coming from mm -hmm. the data. That's right. That's you right. see that as the we, we do. I, I, clearly, what we see with uh, customers is that, going back to the shared responsibility model, it's almost like you rent a car, the renter has some responsibilities, the rental agency and the car manufacturer have responsibilities, and all of us have an understanding of what those responsibilities yeah. are. And At the end of the day, there. I was just talking to another guest, we were saying, hey, the, the, the role is use the data to tell the human not to screw up. <laughs> you know, you're flying on a plane, you got to go secure your door, you got to, you know, it's about really minding the environment you're That's working right. with and That's not right. forgetting anything. And doing it, uh, doing it in real time, because configurations change in the, in the CI, CD pipelines in real time, right? and being able to catch that. And what we've done as part of McAfee over the last year is do something which we call shift left, which is really before an application is born to make it secure. And it's possible in the cloud because it's very transparent. Yeah. We can, and infrastructure is code. So as that code gets checked in, we can yeah. validate it. And, uh, well, I'm glad you brought that point real quick. I know you got to go. DevOps has been a real influence on a lot Huge. of uh, yep. infrastructure as code, but now you have SecOps, yep. DevSecOps, so it's mm -hmm. all kind of the same melting That's pot right. That's of right. agility, iteration, real yeah. time. Yeah. What's your I, version of security version of DevOps? Yeah, it is that. It is basically, rather than playing whack-a-mole after the fact, you know, going and looking at configuration failures or DLP or whatever, push it. And it actually helps the security team because they don't have bandwidth. They want to be able to co-opt developers, and you know, there's literally 100x more developers than security folks. And so being able to integrate it into the tooling for uh, continuous yeah. integration de deployment is something we've done. And uh, it's a huge win for customers. Yeah. Well, Shaker, thanks for sharing the insight. We'll be Absolutely. at your Empower event okay. coming up. We'll do more interviews there sure. and do a deep dive. But real quick, what are you working on right now that's exciting, that's getting you uh, motivated, that puts a little spring into your step? What's happening? Oh, I mean, this is a huge uh, issue around cloud native threats and how we use MITRE and other frameworks to make the uh, SOC teams more, you know, not get lost in all the noise. 
and uh, you'll see a lot of that work from us, but there's a lot of exciting work. A lot of innovation I, coming out of that? A lot of innovation. A software yeah. driven, obviously. Uh, cloud, cloud uh, driven. Cloud native. So. Yep. Well, well, we'll get back and talk about some of the cloud native uh, nuances around Kubernetes, service yeah. mesh, state. state, state we've done a lot of that date, too, yeah. Lot, a lot of action, a lot of tech. Uh -huh. A lot of potential opportunities, but also challenges. Yep. Jager, thank you for coming on theCUBE, appreciate John. it. Pleasure. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, we're here on the ground at RSA Conference. We'll be right back, thanks for watching.